8.3, the section that speaks volumes. Type 1, volume using known cross sections. We have an example. The region R bounded by the relation x squared plus y squared equals 4 is the base of a solid. For this solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. Find the volume of this solid. So let's try to visualize this. We have this circle, this is a circle, with a radius of 4. And we have uh, these squares coming out from uh, the circle as if the circle was the base. So it's like the bottom of a can, except uh, the sides are squares. And we have a nice application to show this. Let's uh, show the chords, and that would represent the base of all of the squares. Let's drop the y-axis flat, so now this is the base of our solid. We're going to take a look at four, just four of the infinite amount of squares. Let's sweep one square, so this, is the, this kind of represents the infinite amount of squares that we're looking at. And notice as the, the squares get closer to the middle, the bases are getting longer and the square is getting bigger. Then, once it hits this halfway point, as it gets to the other side, the squares start to get smaller. Let's create the solid. When we sweep across and represent all of the squares, this is the shape that you end up with. And where there's a vertex, you can see that it creates this edge. Let's show the solid. Here are the four squares that we showed earlier uh, fit where, where they fit into the solid. And then we can take the solid and now here's a visualization of the entire solid with just the squares being swept through. So this is, uh, gives you an idea of what kind of shape we're looking at when we have this circular base and then the cross sections are squares. We want to take the area in X and the area of a square is side squared but we want to get that in X. Now what we notice is from this circle, this half of the circle, to the other half of the circle is the length of the side. But from the X axis to the edge of the circle is the function value and this is actually if we solve for y we have y equals 4 minus x squared and then the square root of that but we really have plus or minus now the top half of the circle is the plus and the bottom half of the circle is the minus so the minus is sitting down here well if we go from the x-axis to the circle that's the length of half of the side half of the side over here now if we said well We'll take a square root of 4 minus x squared, and we'll add that on to negative square root of 4 minus x squared. There's a problem with that, because now you're saying that the length of the side is 0, because these would cancel out. Well, instead of adding these two together, we just say, well, if this is half of the length of the side, then the entire length of the side is double that, 4 minus x squared. Well now if the length of the side of the square is 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared, then we have to square that to get the area. And that's equal to 4 times 4 minus x squared. And if we distribute through we get 16 minus 4x squared. Now that's the area of just one of the squares. And now we have to add a third dimension. In other words, we have to add up all of uh, the squares. And that's where integration comes in. That's a summation of all of the squares. Now we're going from negative 2 to 2 of 16 minus 4x squared. And that's equal to 16x minus 4 thirds x to the third. We're integrating from negative 2 to 2. Let's plug in 2. We get 32 minus... 8 32 thirds then minus when we plug negative 2 in we get negative 32 and then we'll get plus 32 thirds and that's equal to we have 32 plus 32 that's 64 and then minus we have negative 32 and negative 32 minus 64 thirds which is 192 thirds minus 64 thirds 
which is equal to, let's see, uh, we have 8, 128 over 3. Let's look at the same region, but for this solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x axis is an equilateral triangle. Find the volume of this solid. See, I think I have a circle with equilateral triangles. Very good. Show the chords. Well, this is the base of the equilateral triangle. We can drop the y axis. Now we can see four of the equilateral triangles. We can sweep one of them. So this represents all of the equilateral triangles. And notice how the triangles get bigger once you hit the center. Once you hit the center, then they start getting smaller. And that vertex should create this edge that is going to arc over the circle. Let's create the solid. There it goes. There's that vertex. It's creating an edge. And then the sides are linear. And there we have the entire shape. Let's show the solid. Let's uh, have the four triangles inside. And then we can, uh, we have the shape, and then we represent all an infinite amount of triangles being swept through. Find the volume of this solid. Well, we have the same exact circle. So we're going from negative 2 to 2. And uh, let's see, we have the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. But we're trying to get that in x. Uh, so from here to the edge of the circle is the square root of 4 minus x squared. And so the base of the triangle is uh, double that. So the area is equal to 1 half times 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Well, now we have to get the height. So let's take a look at half of the triangle here. Right there, we need the height. Well, we know that this is the square root of 4 minus x squared. And if that's the square root of 4 minus x squared, uh, then this must be 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Well, now we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We have h squared plus this thing squared, which is 4 minus x squared, is equal to 4 times 4 minus x squared. So h squared is equal to, if we uh, minus this over, we have 3 times 4 minus x squared. And then we just have to square root both sides. So we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now we can plug that in for h. So we have times the square root of 3 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. And we're going to integrate this. Well, let's simplify before we integrate. These are going to cancel out, and the area ends up being the square root of 3 times 4 minus x squared. Because these square roots are going to cancel out when you multiply. Uh, we need to integrate this now because we need to get the third dimension or add up all of the triangles. We have the integral from negative 2 to 2 of the square root of 3 times 4 minus x squared dx. Now we can pull the square root of 3 out of this and we get uh, 4x minus 1 third x to the third from negative 2 to 2. We have square root of 3 times. We have 8 minus 8 thirds. And then minus, we have negative 8 and then plus 8 thirds. That's equal to the square root of 3 times. We have 8 plus 8, that's 16. Then negative 8 thirds minus 8 thirds, that's negative 16 thirds. That's equal to the square root of 3 times 48 thirds minus 16 thirds, which is square root of 3 times uh, 32 thirds. In exercises 1 and 2, find a formula for the area A of X of the cross sections of the solid that are perpendicular to the x-axis. So we're trying to find a formula for the area. We want a of x. So that's what we're going we're to try to accomplish that over here. a of x is equal to. The solid lies between planes perpendicular to the x-axis and x equals 0 and x equals 4. So in other words, we're going from 0 to 4 on the x-axis. 
the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis between the planes run from the negative square root of x to the square root of x. So if we were to graph those, this is the square root of x right here, square root of x, and this other half is negative square root of x. The cross sections are circular disks with diameters in the xy plane. So the cross sections are circles. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now we need the radius. Well the radius goes from the middle of the circle to the edge, which is exactly the square root of x. This is equal to pi times the square root of x squared. So the area is equal to pi times x. Now we could, in, we could continue on and find the volume just by integrating, but that's not what we're asked to do. We're just asked to find the area in this case. The cross sections are squares with base in the xy plane. Well now the area of a square, and we want this in x, is equal to the side squared. So we need an x here, not an s. Well, if we look, the, here's the cross sections, they're squares, and half of the base is the square root of x, and the other half will be length square root of x also. The side, the length of the side is 2 square root of x. So a side is 2 square root of x, and then to find an area, we would square that. So we get 4 times x is the, the formula for the area. We could continue on, find the volume, but that's not what we're asked to do. The cross sections are squares with diagonals in the xy plane. So let's try to draw that. We have the square root of x here, negative square root of x there, and then this right here is the diagonal of the squares. So the squares are actually going up in this manner right here. And down it's kind of this diamond shape, but that should be a square. Well now from the x-axis to the corner of the square is the square root of x. So this right here is also square root of x. That means the diagonal of the square. So if we draw a square here, and now this diagonal is 2 times the square root of x. Though so this is a side and this is a side. And we want to know what the side equals. If we have s squared plus s squared, that's going to equal to 4x. 2s squared is equal to 4x, so side squared is equal to 2x. Now the side is equal to the square root of 2 uh, times the square root of x. Now we can go back up and put the square root of 2x in for the formula of a square, and I haven't written that yet, but the area of a square is still side squared. And we decided that the side is equal to the square root of 2x. So the area in the variable x is square root of 2x squared, which is equal to just simply 2x. The cross sections are equilateral triangles with bases in the xy plane. So let's try to draw that. Here's the square root of x. Here's negative square root of x. And uh, so the bases are sitting on the xy plane, and this is an equilateral triangle. So half of the base of the, the triangle is the square root of x, and the, the other half is a length square root of x also. So we've decided that the base, and we have area equals 1 half base times height, the base is 2 times the square root of x. Well, now we have to find the height. We have to fill in this height here. Let's take a look at an equilateral triangle. If one side is 2 square root of x, that means that this side right here is just the square root of x, and we want the height. Height squared, eh, not, not equals, height squared plus the square root of x squared is equal to 2 times the square root of x squared. So h squared is equal to, that's just going to be x plus, plus, not equals, uh, that equals 4x. So the height squared is equal to 3x, because if you minus the x over, you get 3x. So now the height is equal to the square root of 3x. So that's square root of 3x. And uh, we have those cancel out. So the area is equal to, we could do this, square root of 3 times square root of x times square root of x, 
and that's equal to the square root of 3 times x. 